Hi everyone, so uh, I'm actually here. Uh, I just have to, I just done some, I just did some groceries, so yeah. And then I uh, just wanted to just take a, you know, take some, just have some rest before I actually get back home and then uh, get back to work and doing some work, yeah. And then I'll be quite busy after this, so I just wanted to kind of like uh, continue from something that I actually watch today and then also something that I was thinking about um, because I mean I've been thinking about this for a while and then I actually asked a lot of people and you know that there's one point in time when back in my own healing journey from the PTSD and then from the narcissistic abuse thing yeah uh, now I mean it's more or less like I would say it's definitely breach under under the water because I I don't really care, you know. I don't care about the that that former groomer or the that former narcissist in my life. But, but I did tell an uncle in the gym that no matter what, I'm not going to forgive these people. Okay, I'll be honest. So it's just being being honest and being true to myself to to say I'm not going to forgive them because they did everything they did with conscious knowledge and. With the worst of intentions, okay, not the best of intentions, but the worst of intentions. Nothing was good. It was done with malice, and everything was premeditated, pre-planned. So, the question I wanted to just like you know address today here in this very short video is this: you know that uh, a lot of people have been talking a lot about this, and if you go online, you do a search, okay. I believe that some some of y'all have probably done that search. It's like narcissist and black magic, narcissist and witchcraft, uh, narcissist and love spell. So so the whole idea is, the whole question that comes up is this question: Do narcissists actually use black magic, including love spells on you? Okay, on me. Okay. So you know that those who know me, you know they, when I told them about that uh, former groomer in my life eight years ago, okay, they did their own. You know, some of those who were my friends, my buddies, they did some search themselves, and um, they were just like, "Huh? How is it even possible? I don't even think that you can fall and pray to these people." And and I said, "Yeah, that's why." So the issue was, how is it even possible? It has to be. There has to be. There has to be a few reasons, a few causes, and it's not just like oh, uh, they they are very. Ven- I mean, we can just. I mean, on the very simplistic, reductionist level, people can say oh, they are very manipulative. They know how to, to use you. They know how to you know suss out the weak and vulnerable stages of your life. You know when you're going through either sickness or financial difficulty. And uh, or emotional difficulty, and they'll just you know suss it out like the way a shark looks out for bleeding and wounds and everything, and just go for the kill. It's very simplistic to say that, because you know that a lot of people are saying, how is it possible that they seem to know you, and to premeditate? I mean, in a very premeditated way, just when you are about to sort of like you know close the door on them, or to move on from them. They'll come back, <coughs> okay. They'll come back, or they'll use something as a pretext to get back or to strike conversation with you. And having experienced this myself, I can probably say that this is like as close as you can get to a so-called love spell. I know that we have had uh, right now in our modern. Imagination. The idea of magic or witchcraft is, you know, this whole thing that someone uh, sets up the, the so-called stage with some a pot or something of some ingredients, elements. They call the elements or whatever. It can be like to represent either the the four elements or whatever, and and the earth, earth, wind, water, fire. Yeah. Or then, uh, and then there's some other stuff such as. Uh, the timing, doing certain parts of the moon, certain phases of the moon, 
or then on a certain incantation uh, stated with certain gestures so that you know that whole thing with Hollywood is I mean Hollywood has kind of like con- conditioned us to think that that is witchcraft but the or even black magic or even just white magic I mean there's no for me there's no such thing called white and black magic because it is basically what your intentions are that leads to that kind of outcome so but 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 that that is not exactly what I now understand of uh, witchcraft okay uh, especially after after the experience you know the way the word witch 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 w i c c e is the which is in old english is the original uh, root from which the word witch came witch okay it means someone who practices magic how, how is magic being practiced it's practiced in speaking speaking for so you know when you cast a spell you are spelling forth desire like that's why you know they call you a spelling bee you know spelling the words saying the words why is it important to say out loud by saying out loud you manifest it okay you throw something out into the realm the astral realm the spiritual realm the psychic realm and I know it sounds like a cop up to say that yeah the narcissist is probably using some form of witchcraft sometimes without knowing it but how did how does it actually work uh, my one friend said you know like when for example he was talking about the ex groomer when the ex groomer started cursing me okay some of the curses are like uh, you know I'll never I'll never find friends I'll die alone I'll be alone for the rest of my life I'll be unhappy I'll be blah 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 of course you know it's I will believe in it whether it's going to come true that that makes it more likely to come true when we talk about the placebo effect but other than faith compelling something to come true um, there's also the other element of the fact that they are projecting casting their ill intentions their malice at you so when they curse you they are committing witchcraft and sorcery towards you okay even if they are not witches yeah they are throwing out their intentions into the universe into whatever space or realm wherever there's some you know demonic or spiritual energy that that or power that will take up that command or desire of theirs and reciprocate it to put a curse on us okay so that's the thing and that applies to things like even love magic like how is it that they're able to get us to love them when they are not even that good of a person now in retrospect i think about everything that you know that all these narcissists do it's funny it's like you know you think of us ourselves we are generally very smart um, well achieved in life or at least well situated we know what we want uh, even if we don't really get we're not getting to the point that we want to be we are relatively attractive physically too most of us are as empaths but yet why do we get so traumatized over someone who might not even be that attractive okay and it's like trying to be uh, emotionally distressed over Shrek <laughs> when you are actually princess or <laughs> princess Bella uh, princess Fiona whatever that, 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 that joke okay uh, it just makes you realize <coughs> yeah that's witchcraft they practice a lot of these things witchcraft is not just casting out of your evil intentions to manifest it on the spiritual realm it's also manifesting it okay this is what you speak for and it is also intermittent reinforcement they keep on 
repeating the same things over and over again. The same words, the same word salad. Over and over again, they tell you that you're not good enough. Okay? That you need them. That without them, you're nothing. When, in honesty, they are actually the ones who will wither away without anyone. Okay? So, the question is, what next? You know that actually, honestly, I I know that people will say that this is like, oh, this is superstition to actually do things like, why I'm, you know, I'm wearing this, this is a prayer robe, okay? Uh, it's not a rosary, rosary, but uh, it's a, yeah, it's a, you can see it's a orthodox prayer robe. It's given by, given by my priest. Uh, I haven't really told, told my priest about this, 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 this thing, but it was like so many years ago, and uh, but I think eventually when we do confession, you still have to let your priest know something from like counseling and pastoral reasons. And I kind of think that, I mean, me to begin with, I think the real people who really care, I mean, about their so-called vocation as uh, servants of God, they, they, won't, they will not guess like you, okay? I can't, I can't. Yeah, there's an older lady who is talking stuff, so. But, you know, I couldn't do this in my, my former, in the former churches that I was at. They frown on psychological aid, help, or even psychiatric help. The thing is actually satanic. The guests like you, saying that you are committing a sin when you go and find a psychologist or psychiatrist. Uh, that was what the Bible Presbyterian Church that did, okay? Uh, obviously, I couldn't stay on. Although that was way before the episode with the ex groomer But but back to this whole thing. How do we protect ourselves? You know that no no contact is just the beginning because one thing is you can be in a space where you don't hear anything from those people. But deep down inside your head you're still like, you know, drumming, you're repeat replaying them over and over and over again. And when you replay it, that's actually when things get very uh, it gets very sticky because you know the thing is your mind would be the one that you will be blaming your, you'll be blaming yourself okay I think I myself I, I have because I struggled myself with this kind of thing so then the thing then is like what next I think that for those who are religious like me or who at least are spiritual enough aware of the realm the realm of the spiritual we know that this thing is not just it's not just psychological, emotional, or even uh, physical or material. They get their hooks into you, obviously. Like those the demons, when you know you see those paintings and all those, the claws are into you. The sinks and the hooks are into you. So the next thing that you ask is, I mean, I mean what, what kind of protection do we need? I know it sounds very, really, very really simplistic. My, my, I mean, it's my friend, when I, one of my friends, when I actually told him about the discard, just right after it happened, okay. Um, I mean, some of them just told me about, about things like very simplistic, like, oh, to heal and whatever. Uh, even those who are counselors and social workers, one of them will say, oh, you take some time to recover from this, but I don't think it's enough. It's not enough, you know why? Because the, the rules are very spiritual. I think I told y'all that uh, for some time after my grandmother passed away, I felt as if, as if I was very raw because for years I haven't had that kind of uh, after 2018, yeah, from 2018 until 2022, I haven't had any kind of like dreams where I remember anything about the you know the ex groomer or the former narcissist anymore and all the flying monkeys. I just couldn't care. Okay. Uh, if I encounter one flying monkey or whatever, I just block them. There's no need to call, to get caught up in the drama, the circus, whatever. But when my grandmother passed, all of a sudden, you know, like two, slightly less than two months. Actually, two months, yeah. Two months after that, I had a nightmare, that terrorist nightmare. It wasn't like the, the terrorist holding me hostage in a rose garden and then I had to I teleported myself outside. I said, I knew, I know, I then all of a sudden, I, I just woke up 
with the face remembering the face that demonic face of the ex groomer oh you know how traumatizing it is I had to actually I immediately went to I told I told my the counsellor whom I was speaking I mean he was actually tending to my case about my own life situation I told him about it I said I, know, I told him that was when I told him I need, I need some help from a psychologist who knows EMDR because I don't think any more counsellor is helping me enough I need, I need more help beyond the thing it's really did you see the trauma and I remember telling the psychologist about this I told her about the dreams including some of them one of them included uh, some strange guy trying to again lure me into something and then uh, some loony guy and then when, 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 when he ran after me he sort of, sort of tried to hold my hand my hand slap, slipped and then I just ran away or flew away all these dreams uh, that dream was last year somewhere over yeah my friend actually told me, is it a spiritual attack? I'm not denying it, but I don't have I don't have sleep paralysis, very thankfully, but I kinda realize oh all these are signs. The narcissist is always stretching out. You know the, the demons in them, the spirits and then whatever spiritual entities are possessing them or influencing them or giving them that, that power to harm us. He's stretching out his hands to to sort of like, you know, haunt us in our sleep. Sometimes you can see the nut astro projecting in our, into our dreams. And, but guess what? I, I told the psychologist, this, she said, have you thought about maybe, since you are a Christian, maybe get get your icons, start wearing your, I mean, other than wearing your cross or whatever, which is a wild cross I'm wearing, maybe get your icons and just put up icons there and pray more and whatever. At least part of your home faith or whatever. And that was what I did, okay? I prayed the Lord's prayer. I prayed Jesus' prayer. I put up icons. Everything stopped. Yeah. So I'm very sure that there's a spiritual link to this. Okay. Uh, over the weekend, as I said, you know, I confronted one friend or acquaintance, whom I found actually was in the airline industry, up to the ex groomer. I got very angry confronted him obviously as I said but I realized this if I were to just keep on seeing all these feeds even secondary feeds or tertiary feeds from someone else of the ex-groomer it's not doing me any good so I placed that person on restrict too I need to preserve my space not just emotional not just my physical space but my emotional space my spiritual space too okay so yeah for everyone who has a faith you know, turn to God. As I asked Jesus, you know, I actually asked him, say, He's God incarnate. The Holy Spirit is in us believers. So let the Holy Spirit stand between all these evil doers. And if need be, Father God send down all the patron saints all my patron saints my, my guardian angels to stand between all these evil entities like Archangel Raphael Archangel Michael Saint Volodymyr the great my patron saint Saint Yaroslav the wise Saint Constantine, Saint Nikiforos the second, Focus, all this, the Imperial Saints, Saint Pantelot Lemon, the Martyr Saint, who's also a doctor, all these people. Saint Dina, patient saint of mental illness. I also got to send and you know, to stand to stand between me and my and all these all these demons. Or trying to, or trying to terrorize me. You know they are very scared. They are very scared of God. I think so. On the surface, they may look like, oh, you know, this is one thing with the ex-boomers, always pretending to be agnostic, saying, oh, I'm, 
very open to religion, but I just don't have an affiliation to any religion. I don't, I don't believe it. Your best friend was one of the flying monkeys, is a Muslim. He was constantly stalking me and getting people to actually feed information to and fro from me. Back to the person. These people are using black magic. You need to pray. Pray against them. Okay? Pray to Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or even the Lord's prayer. If you want to even pray Hugh Mary's, ask the Mother of God, the Virgin Mary, to stand there. You know, she's a she's a woman, but so what? They're scared of her <laughs> because. In her humanity, she bore the fullness of God in her womb. Okay. Anyway, I think I'm rested enough. I'm going to go off and uh, have a good one, everyone. Okay. So uh, don't, 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 don't allow that kind of black magic, whatever they're doing, to get to you. You better find a space, safe space, even if it's a safe space spiritually. Okay. So, all the best, everyone. Okay. Okay, bye-bye.